Hey everyone, I'm here with Craig Jackson from Craig Jackson's Contracting and we are doing a little class trip to a construction site today. So you can see behind us we have a house that's being built that Craig is in charge of taking care of that and he's going to take us around and show us a few things. Yes. Yeah, follow me. I guess we'll, uh, we can start from here. Uh, Alright, hi kids. How you doing? <laughs> so we just wanted to show you guys kind of how a house gets built and where we start and what, we're, what our goal is at the end of the day. So you'll notice at the front door here, we've got some really big pieces of wood that are gonna carry a big roof over top of the front door. Um, those are called timbers. They're basically the whole part of a tree just cut up square and we use that for our structural wood. If you look over this way over across the garage, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll notice way up top, there's a whole bunch of wood rafters that are acting as the bones of the roof and inside there are some steel beams. The steel beams are what carries all the weight when it snows on us and when it rains and it protects from the wind moving the roof around. Um, that's a big roof too. That's a big roof. The plywood that you see that covers here the, the, the lighter looking stuff it acts as the skin of the of the roof. It holds all the bones together and makes everything tight so that we can finish the inside. So that's basically it for that. So now we're inside, we just walked through the front door and over in this section over here is going to be the kitchen. Ooh. And over in this room is gonna be the TV room, fireplace. And you'll notice that we don't have any coverings on the wall yet. We can't just go ahead and start painting our room. We have to put another layer of skin on top of these studs in order that we can paint the walls and hang pictures on the walls. So this is what it looks like before you move into your room and before there's flooring. So inside each of these cavities here, we're gonna fill it up with that insulation. You guys know what insulation is? Yeah, the itchy stuff. That kind of stuff goes in here and keeps the house warm. Because what happens in the winter time? It gets cold. It gets cold, so we need to put insulation in here to keep us warm inside. And is there a reason why they're spaced apart the way that they are? They are, there is, yes. If we were to remove this one and space them out this far, mm -hmm. over time, the weight above would start to squish the plates and it would sag, right? Okay. So it, would, it wouldn't last. So we have to keep them on a certain measurement, which is 16 inches. From edge to edge. Oh, I'm going to zoom in on that because we're measuring too. Mm, 16 inches, awesome. right on. And you'll notice here we have actually added a few extra. Mm -hmm. That is because this truss right here, this roof member, is carrying a lot of weight. All these metal brackets here are hanging up four rafters. There's a lot of weight on that truss. So we have to add extra bones underneath it to keep it so strong. So bigger bones make it strong. That's right. Awesome. That's why you got to drink your milk. <laughs> so now we're back upstairs. Uh, those steel beams we looked at before from down on the ground were up now in the room so it's easier to see. But you can see how the steel rafters come up from the ground, they go all the way up and they carry that big steel beam that's running this way. That's called a ridge beam. That carries all of our rafters, these guys, to sit on at the very top, again, so that all of our snow does not squish or sag that beam over time. So we have to make sure we follow the drawings correctly and uh, frame the roof for what they asked for. Well, anyway, this is where we are, and the guys are just doing a, a couple of dormers right now. I don't know if you maybe want to have a look here, but... We're just trying to frame in the first dormer here. We have six to do on this roof. And it's all about measuring and cutting the rafter exactly the way you measured it. Now we're around back of the house. Uh, we just wanted to show you guys, it's pretty cool looking up in here, seeing this big roof hanging over top of the, of the deck here. Um, you'll notice that there's some big beams that come from the house and sit on top of 
posts coming out this way. And on top of that, we have our roof trusses that are sitting in there. You'll notice that in the skeleton of these roof trusses, there's not only pieces of wood going up and down and sideways, but they're also coming on some pretty different angles. Uh, when the engineers figure this all out and where the weight is going to sit, every little piece of wood has to be in the exact right spot in order for that truss to hold the weight. If there's one piece missing, it's not going to do its job. Every little piece has to be exactly where it needs to be, and we're not allowed to cut them or nick them or anything. It has to be 100% the way we got it. So, we just wanted to show you that. We see this go kind of there. You'll notice the ceiling comes up here on from beam to beam. It's called the cathedral ceiling. That's going to make the room feel a little bit bigger when we're standing in there as the ceiling will rise up. So, just wanted you guys to see that. Eventually, it will all be covered on the face and there will be some sort of siding put on that. So now we're down in the basement, and I heard this my whole life, and you guys will hear it a lot too. House is only as good as its foundation. So look, now we're in the basement, that's where the foundation is. This wall right here, you'll notice, there's some styrofoam here and some styrofoam here, but there's none in here. But what happens is this whole wall is built like that, and we fill this whole cavity up with concrete in between here. So even and though that's wood, it's actually concrete on the other in side. In behind this one piece of wood is a concrete wall all the way through here. And the reason why we do this is, again, in our winters, we get pretty cold and we want our concrete to stay warm. So we have styrofoam on both sides of it. And the concrete inside, inside also has a whole bunch of metal rebar that runs through it. So there are bars of metal about this thick and they run all the way through it, up and down in this way, and when that concrete sets around those bars, it just holds it so tight and so snug. This house is not going anywhere. Um, you look down here at this concrete right here. This is called a footing, and this is the, the bearing wall that sits on the footing. The concrete has to sit on the ground, and it acts as a big shoe. Think if you were walking through the sand and you had high heels on, you're not going to walk very far or very fast, are you? No. But if you have a really big snowshoe on walking through the sand, you're not going to sink in, you're going to go far. So that's the theory behind this. It's a lot wider than our wall is because it acts as a big shoe for, for, for the land. You'll notice here, there's about six two by six studs Ooh. all nailed together. This is carrying a steel beam that runs all the way over there and also a steel beam that goes this way and it carries the whole floor that we were on before on the main floor. So kind of the, like the roof. There. Just exactly yeah. like the roof, only this one's flat, it's not like this. Now this also would carry the load of the second floor though too, it exactly right? Exactly does. So you'll see right here we have some blocking pushed in here on top of this beam. The reason for that is upstairs we have another huge beam that has to come down and sit on there. So right up here is where that beam sits. It has to transfer the load from there through here all the way down to our footing. And you'll notice our footing is really big down here where the beams sit. Really big snowshoe there. Really big snowshoe. And it's kind of the same idea right here. You'll notice that. This shoe comes out and gets really big, this footing. That's because when we're almost ready to pour the concrete, we're gonna put another post in here to carry that steel beam there. Huh. And that is pretty well it in the basement. It's and what happens to concrete if it gets cold and, and warm? Well, and what could happen warm. is it could get a hairline crack in the concrete mm -hmm. and then moisture from the wall sweating right could get in that crack and then if that water freezes it expands and makes the crack a lot bigger well now we're in trouble now the foundation is going to start to fail we don't want that so we we take our time we make sure we do it right and make sure when we're building in canada we build it for canadian weather that is it so is there a certain time that you have to pour the concrete yes yes that's good questions yeah we want to do it when it's warm but if it is cold, 
we can add calcium to the concrete, which will make it cure before it freezes. So it costs more money to do that, and we also have to keep it heated. We have to keep the straw on it. So a lot of the times we try and do it in the summertime when it's warm. Yeah, we try and stop our concrete before it gets cold. Big thank you to Craig Jackson and Craig Jackson Contracting for letting us come and have a little class trip to the construction site today. So thank you to you, sir, and good luck on the rest of your build. Thank you. Okay. Have fun, kids. Take care.